Good morning, St. Margaret's. Thank you for joining us for this online worship. And for those of you in the parking lot, thank you for joining us. You can listen to the speakers here if you want to listen to your to the on, on the radio and keep the heater on on this brisk Sunday morning. You can listen to us on 89.7 FM. Uh, we thank you all for joining us here um, um, for this beautiful day. We're going to start off our morning with uh, hymn number 685, Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, clefts for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side that flowed be of sin the double cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power. Should my tears forever flow, should my sin no longer know, all for sin could not atone, thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. While I draw this fleeting breath, when mine eyelids close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown, and behold thee on my throne, rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough bread for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it is the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? As? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, 
and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quills came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The Word of the Lord. If you have your prayer books, uh, the psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6 and 37 through 45. Uh, you can find that on page 738 of the Book of Common Prayer, uh, or you can uh, read the psalm with us uh, in your bulletin. We'll say Psalm 105 together. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes, there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked and quails appeared and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock and water flowed, so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations and they took the fruit of others' toil that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. To me, living in Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in flesh, that means fruitful labor, labor for me and do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, but that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you, all of you, for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, is this is the evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and at about three o'clock, he did the same. And at 
about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. Now when the first, uh, and when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. If you're standing up, uh, be seated. Very good morning to you, uh, St. Margaret. It's a a pleasure to be with you here in the parking lot on this little bit brisker than I thought uh, morning. Uh, A pleasure to be with you for uh, for those of you joining from home, Uh, whether it's here in Lawrence or around uh, the world. uh, We trust that God is with us and God is the one who knits our hearts together. Um, I want to talk this morning uh, about a a news article I I, I read this week. I I ran across it. It was... this is not going to surprise you. I think there's been a, a lot of uh, discussion about this reality. But um, the news article was about the, the rise of the contract workforce in the U.S. Uh, according to a, a somewhat recent poll, at this moment, one in five jobs in America are held by contract workers. And within the next 10 years, uh, they think the number could rise to the point where half of the American workforce consists of freelancers and contractors and, and other... Th- others of those who, who work in what's sometimes called the gig economy. Um, these changes to the American workforce are significant uh, because there are very specific challenges that go along with the reality that is contract labor. Uh, for example, according to the article, more than half of the employees uh, that are under contract don't receive benefits of any kind, uh, which means they don't have any health insurance uh, nor do they have retirement, nor do they have pension. In addition, there's the element of uncertainty that goes with the gig economy. Um, One thing that was interesting in the article that that I read is it it described uh, online platforms that match workers with clients. Um, And uh, the article rather bleakly compared these platforms to, to dating websites. Uh, Unfortunately, um, unsurprisingly perhaps, contract workers often find themselves working one day and then sent home the next. Um, And that's difficult. It's difficult to plan and to budget when your hours and even your uh, your employment are unpredictable. It's, It's difficult to hope for more and steadier work only to find yourself disappointed time and again. It's difficult to feel like you're wanted when you know tomorrow you very well might not be. Stepping back for a second, it's it's that feeling of being wanted or being needed uh, that I think is perhaps the most uncertain element in today's modern workplace. Um, And this is true whether you're a freelancer or whether you work in the very highest levels of management. Decade after decade of mass layoffs uh, has created quite a bit of distrust between the average American worker and their employer. Over this time, American workers have had to confront again and again the reality that each one of us is, is easy to downsize, easy to be made redundant, easy to replace. And so, despite the fact that 
Study after study has revealed that Americans work longer hours, work harder, uh, and work with a greater efficiency than ever before. It would seem that very few of us are ever truly secure in our careers. More than that, more than just that challenge, um, because our culture places such a high value on vocation, many of us feel the sort of pressure of two opposing forces working against us. First, people hear again and again, and we believe it. We've heard it so much, we believe it, that you are what you do. You are what you accomplish. You are your success. Taking that all in, we turn around and we find ourselves struggling, right, in our vocations, struggling to feel secure, struggling to feel needed or wanted. Often, many of us are unable to plan for tomorrow or next week or next month. We're living at the mercy of others. And we put that together and it's, it's a rather toxic recipe that leaves many of us wondering rather basic things like from where does our sense of security actually come from? What is our identity? And where are we to derive our value in contemporary society? One thing I love about scripture is that if you read it and you read it prayerfully, you'll learn time and again that its relevance only increases. Life is not all that different, is it, from the time of Jesus? The passage we heard just a few moments ago from Matthew's gospel is so very similar to our lived experiences today in the 21st century. So what's happening in this morning's gospel? Um, this is right after that parable of the rich young man. Jesus and his disciples have just witnessed a, a rich young man walk away from the kingdom of God on account of his possessions. He owned too much, and he wasn't willing to give it away. And then Jesus looks at that picture, and he sees a man who by all accounts has it all. And yet from a different perspective, lacks everything. And Jesus explains that in God's kingdom, the economy is going to be just a little bit different. And the first are going to be last, and the last are going to be first. And he wants to illustrate this fact. He wants to help them come to grips at just how radically different the kingdom of God really is. And so he tells a story. And he tells a story about a landowner and the people who work for him. The setting of day laborers working very long hours for relatively little money, that setting would have been very familiar to the disciples and to everyone who heard that story. They would have understand, uh, they would have understood that, that, that contract that existed between the, the landowner and those first people that were beginning their work at the crack of dawn. They would have understood that in exchange for a, a very long and honest day's work, the, the workers there at dawn would have received a denarius, the unit of currency for a day's labor. It was the agreed upon sum, but it was very difficult to actually sustain yourself on that amount. And so even the ones that are there at dawn and the ones who receive the offer, even them are struggling. So he, he makes his first hires uh, at about 6 o'clock in the morning, but he doesn't stop there. He's interested in hiring more people. So he goes out again at 9 in the morning, and then he goes again at noon, and then he goes at 3. And then finally, 
At five o'clock in the evening, he goes out again. And he brings back additional workers. OK, an hour later, the day has ended. And the landowner does something really surprising, and it would have shocked the disciples that heard it. And that's what Jesus was really trying to do. Actually, it's a couple different things that Jesus does that are surprising. First, he pays the ones who began work at five, just an hour before, he pays them that denarius, that unit of currency that was meant to pay someone for an honest day's work. That is a very generous sum for someone who had worked an hour. You can imagine those who woke up at six in the morning and began work and have toiled long and hard. You can imagine that they were getting excited when they anticipated the generosity that was coming their way. But then he does that second surprising thing and he pays the ones who had worked all day a denarius as well. This makes the people that had worked all day very upset, obviously. And they grumble. They grumble at the landowner. Their complaint is that the, the landowner had dared to make people who had worked an hour equal to them. If you wanted to put it in today's terms, you can imagine those who had worked all day coming up to the landowner and, and, and they just say to him, it's just not fair. I think most of us, perhaps all of us who are listening this morning, I think we can identify with those laborers, can't we? After all, uh, a lot of people consider this parable that, that we're talking about to be one of the more difficult teachings from Jesus. Our culture is deeply committed to the idea of fairness. We, who are formed by such a culture, we are deeply committed to the idea of fairness. It strikes us as, as strange and unusual the landowner would be so generous with the latecomers, but then failed to reward the hard workers, the earliest laborers, the ones who had been there since the very crack of dawn. And so we, we read this sometimes, and we, we're kind of tempted to agree with those grumbling workers, and we're, we're tempted to say alongside with them, that's just not fair, is it? So how do we resolve this, this tension? How do we kind of solve this puzzle? I'm convinced uh, that most people, when they read this passage or they hear this passage, we've heard it enough or, or, or we've, we've, we've read it enough that we, we've become used to it. And I think we tend to overlook a critical detail. And it's really the detail that unlocks the meaning of the parable. I'm assuming most of us didn't even think much about this little detail when I read it, even though it's the key to grasping what Jesus is teaching. Right there in, in the parable, right in the middle, acting almost like a hinge, for the whole text, there are six little words that cast a fresh light on what Jesus is trying to communicate. It's a radically different perspective once you get your mind around those six little words. They help us understand what the landowner is doing. At five o'clock in the afternoon when the landowner goes out for the last time and he looks for the very last workers, after he's gone out four separate times to hire laborers, the landowner finds workers who are standing idly by and he asks them a question. It's a rather important question. He asks them why. Why are you standing here at 5 o'clock in the evening? The day is nearly done. What are you doing? Do you remember what they say? Do you remember their answer to his question? They tell him, because no one has hired us. Because no one has hired us. Friends, our mistake in trying to understand this passage is that we think the workers at 5 o'clock, they're just like the laborers who have worked since dawn. We think of all of them as sort of parties to an agreement. 
We think of the landowner as someone who's negotiating a bunch of contracts, and if you line them up one after the other, you realize that they don't make sense. It's not fair to negotiate these kinds of contracts. But that's not what the kingdom of God is. The workers at 5 o'clock are not like the laborers at dawn. God is not a party we contract with. God's kingdom is not something we bargain for. God is not a heavenly talent recruiter. God is not searching this world for the best and the brightest. God does, n does not weed out the redundant. He doesn't downsize the expendable. God's kingdom is the opposite of all of this. And Jesus' parable this morning is a picture of our world turned upside down. God's love is so different from our world and the messages that our world gives us day after day. God's care and commitment and concern are pouring out into our world and they are in search especially for the lost and the lonely, the weak and the vulnerable. For in the end, my friends, God is not seeking to reward the lovely. God wants to love the overlooked. Friends, I want you to hear one thing from me this morning, and it's this. We are all five o'clock workers. God's redeeming love for each and every one of us is pure grace. And those things that so many of us are searching for in this world, security, a sense of identity, having a place in our world, they are meant to be found in that grace. We can't merit this kind of love. The landowner, after all, he wasn't compelled to come back at five in search of the lost. Jesus wasn't compelled to sacrifice himself on a cross for our sake. Rather, all that we can do, all that we can do, is to follow the landowner's command to follow him into the vineyard. It's a bit irrational. Some of, of us might think of, of it as being unfair. And yet I'm convinced that invitation at 5 o'clock for us to follow a landowner into the vineyard is the single greatest hope any of us can ever have in this world. Let me close uh, with this. In just a few moments, uh, I have the distinct privilege uh, of baptizing the newest member of St. Margaret's Episcopal Church. And uh, as I was, I was reading uh, the lectionary and, and I was thinking about this morning, I, I felt gratitude in my heart for how things uh, lined up because um, just like our parable, Baptism is an image of pure grace. As, as cute as she is, and she's, she's very cute, very small at the moment there in the distance, as cute as she is, little Alexandria, uh, she hasn't done anything more than you or I to deserve or merit the love and the mercy and the grace of God in Christ Jesus. No, it's pure gift that in a moment God is going to bury her into Christ's death and is going to raise her into new life. It's by God's grace that after today, she can spend every day finding her security, her identity, her place in this world, not in what she does or what she accomplishes or what her successes might be, but rather in who she is. She's a beloved child of God. 
She'll be a follower of Jesus. And she'll be the newest laborer in the vineyard. Amen. candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Let us join with those who are committing, with her who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts, or open her heart to your grace and truth. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send her into the world and witness to your love. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O oh Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection 
and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns for now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we, were, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into this fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water. We pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Who do you bring this morning? All right. Alexandria. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alexandria, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Now that we've honked, uh, join with me in the prayer. Uh, <laughs> we receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. St. Margaret, it is my distinct honor and distinct privilege to introduce to you the very newest member of St. Margaret's Episcopal Church, Alexandria. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You can take her on a tour.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you, in him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Margaret, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by, with thanksgiving.
feet may fail And there I find you in the mystery In oceans deep My faith will stand And I will call upon your name Keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you never fail and you won't start now and I will call above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith could be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior.
and I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest in your embrace, and I am yours, and you are mine. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Oh, well, St. Margaret's, uh, a joy to be with you on this baptism uh, Sunday, a, a joy uh, to gather uh, in person and, and uh, to be united one in spirit uh, if you're joining us from home. Uh, today's just a, a wonderful day to, to welcome the, the newest little, little one into our midst. Uh, Jesus uh, told us that the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these, uh, and so we're, we're proud to, to call Alexandria our own on this morning. Um, I have just a couple uh, announcements for you. Uh, first off, a, a week from today, uh, we'll begin our uh, uh, adult formation class. It's going to be co-led by a vestry member, so we're, we're going to have a couple different uh, voices. Uh, Molly McVeigh is going to be helping lead that class. We're going to be tackling a couple different texts. We're going to do it over Zoom. Uh, that's the plan. It, right now, the plan is uh, 8.30 uh, for adult formation, uh, although that might change depending on, on people's schedules. Obviously, uh, you know, with the, the, the pandemic, everything is different in terms of kind of people's availability and, and what people's mornings and evenings look like. So we'll probably have a discussion a week from today at 8.30 whether we'll want to continue with that time or we'll want to uh, uh, switch it around. Also, the, the rector's uh, book study is going to be starting up again soon. Uh, we've got a really good kind of core contingent of people uh, that have been joining us for that, and I think we'll be circling back when that resumes. If you're interested in joining that, that uh, happens during the week. It's a, it's a, a lunchtime uh, book study. We, we just kind of tackle a book and discuss it together uh, over lunch, over Zoom. Uh, but if you're interested in that, uh, please reach out to me, and, and I'll give you details on the rector's book study. Uh, other than that, I, I hope and trust that, that all is uh, well with you. Uh, if you're joining us from home, I, I miss you and love you as always. Uh, I, I look forward to uh, our being together inside the building sooner rather than later. But until then, uh, know that you're loved, know that you're missed, and know what a joy it is 
even though things are so different, um, I know, I trust that God is worshipped in the midst of this. Uh, we are welcoming new ones into our midst, and we're uh, offering our, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to God uh, for, for Jesus and the gift that he is. And so uh, the work continues, even though it's different. Um, and uh, just know that uh, I love and miss you, and, and I look forward uh, to the day when, when we're back inside. But until then, I wish you the best, and I wish you a very great week. So that's bye for now. Thank you.